Hello everybody and thank you for tuning in to another tale of two countries. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Montana and specifically the Bozeman area where I'm stationed. Now I've only been here a few months but already Montana is a place that is near and dear to my heart. From the snow-covered peaks of the Rocky Mountains to the trout-filled streams to the rolling hills in eastern Montana it is an absolutely gorgeous place and there's a ton of stuff to do. Montana is, in fact, quite massive. You could fit three North Carolinas inside of its space. It's a very enormous state. It's about fourth in the nation behind Alaska, Texas, and California. But despite its massive size, it only has roughly a million people inside of it. So despite being able to fit three North Carolinas in there, it's got a tenth of the population of North Carolina. To put this in perspective, the largest city in, in Montana is Billings, which has roughly 200,000 people, whereas the largest city in North Carolina is Charlotte, which has roughly 860,000 people. So even the large cities of Montana, which are Missoula, Billings, Helena, the capital, and Bozeman, which are all located on the western side inside the mountain ranges, still have, to me, almost a small town feel. Yet there are places in Montana that are even more remote and uh, more rural even within those those areas. For example, um, the vast majority of eastern Montana is very sparsely populated. It is a series of rolling hills that is kind of the continuation of the Dakotas in terms of climate and the vast majority of the industry there is either logging or ranching or other agricultural pursuits. In fact, many places in the United States uh, get their, their barley and their grains for producing beer and craft beer from Montana. The western part of Montana is a little bit more diverse. You've got a massive mountain range, the, the, which is the Rocky Mountains on the very western side, and that helps produce industry such as mining, uh, and, which is usually uh, for copper and gold and tin, as well as logging and a m quite massive tourism industry, which, come, which is about $3 billion uh, annually. And the areas that really benefit that are either up, up north uh, towards Glacier National Park or where I am, which is kind of towards the very so southern, southwestern tip of Montana, which has uh, Yellowstone about an hour and a half away. Uh, you've got uh, the biggest ski lodge in North America uh, about an hour to the west, and you've got the biggest city about two hours to the east. So you've got a, you've got a pretty big divergent population and uh, geopolitical landscape here where the west is a little bit more industrialized, a little bit more centralized, you've got three quarters of the state east, which is really just rolling landscapes of, of rural farms. And it is a very interesting group of people who live here. It's, it's far more diverse than I had expected. While there are only, while there, it's 90% white, and uh, the next highest demographic is like 66,000 Native Americans. Um, the, in terms of the people who come here, uh, it, it is quite unique. There, I've seen more Colorado, Californian, Idaho, Washington, Oregon license plates. I know at least a dozen other people from North Carolina who have already moved out here to this specific area in Bozeman. And it seems that the Bozeman area has experienced rapid growth over the last decade. Um, it is only about 45,000 people or so, but it, 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 the market, the housing market, has not been able to really keep up with the amount of people that are coming in. So it's a fantastically beautiful area nestled in the heart of this, this wonderful valley. I can look out the window every day and see mountains in the distance, just stunning, gorgeous vistas. And I, I can go outside and do just about whatever I want in terms of outdoor activities from skiing, sledding, snowshoeing, fishing, hunting, hiking, backpacking. I can go down to Yellowstone in an hour and a half. So it's, it's quite 
a lovely area that hides kind of a darker secret. It is so beautiful and, and splendid that many people move here. But because, pe because housing is so expensive and wages have not increased to that same measure, that, that creates a lot of problems for the people who, who do live here who aren't working necessarily in the tech industry. For example, um, the average home price in Bozeman, in the Bozeman area, is roughly $450,000, which is oh, incredibly expensive to me coming from an area where like $120,000 to $200,000 was the average or norm. And it is primarily because there are a lot of people who come here from, according to the locals, a lot of people who come here from the east or the west coast who have a lot of money who are coming in to buy into this kind of Montana lifestyle um, and they're just buying up all the land. Whereas the locals, a lot of Montanans, um, at the median income from for Montanans is about $26,000 a year. So they just simply can't compete. If you look at Zillow or anything like that, that rental prices for a two bedroom or is somewhere around $1,500. So it is, it, it is an interesting dilemma where people on the eastern half of Montana uh, really can't find enough people to rent out to whereas people in the western half of Montana in certain areas simply can't afford to rent any places to live. And I'll be talking more about the economics of the situation and what's going on in Bozeman and what I'm doing with the HRDC later, but I just want to give you guys a, a brief glimpse into the kind of beautiful nature of Montana and how interesting it is whilst showing some of the, the issues that are kind of hidden under this glamorous surface. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I look forward to talking with you guys again next week. Have a great day.